When they arrested me, they put handcuffs and a blindfold on my on me. At three thirty, I arrived to offer jail, and the soldiers told me to take off all my clothes. They put me in a room and they gave me brown prison clothes. I saw my son, he crying, and I cannot stop after. He is my son, I want to say hello to my son. He stop, don't say nothing, don't touch him, nothing, nothing to do, just you are like, like the wall, you cannot do anything. When I entered the court, I saw my son. He has red eyes. But I couldn't say yes. My son, he do it, and he say yes. I want to finish. Mama, I want to go out. I will see yes. Never, never, he said, I cannot believe what they, they make for me. I am like the animal. They are put me in the car to travel for three days in the, in the jeep. Nobody can help, nobody, if they kill me, nobody, he can help me. I want to go home. He said, Mama, I, I, in my dream, I, 
I saw that I see the soldiers they want to catch me and when they uh, uh, they stop him the last time he's, he has very very yellow face I cannot believe Most cases end in a plea bargain. Some of the kids admit that they threw whatever they threw at their police investigation already. And it's just a matter of time until the, the lawyer will make a plea bargain with the a military system and the, the judge will uh, accept the plea bargain then the, he will finish his sentence and he will pay his fine and will go out of prison. But some of these kids don't want to admit. They said we didn't do it. And this is the interesting process because most of these kids eventually at the end understand that the shortest way to get out of the system and go home is to admit. We know that there are certain international laws and there are certain Israeli laws how to interrogate children or minors. And it's not being respected when Palestinian children are being interrogated. They don't get to see a lawyer, they don't always notify the parents, there is no pre a, a grown up on behalf of the minor present in the interrogation, they make them sign it on in Hebrew, which is not their speaking language, and they're also being kept in prisons inside Israel, which is also, according to the international law, is illegal. Some of the accusations are so ridiculous that we can't believe it. Anyhow, I think that Israel politics is working very hard and putting a lot of efforts and a lot of energies and a lot of money into teaching the Palestinians lessons instead of getting out of there. It's a big umbrella that, that is called security that keeps under it everything. And I think that the, the thought behind it, I think that the thought behind it is, is will keep them under a very strict control and will catch them on every small tiny things that they do, even if they are 13 years old. In order to maintain ourselves as conquerors to maintain the occupation, we have to keep the locals under very strict rule that they won't be able to plan anything ahead of time. They will always be suffocated by actions that the army or the ruler is doing so that they won't get organized against the occupation. They give them lesson they cannot 
They cannot forget this person all their life. I, I ask a lot of women now to not have children because it's too much, too much to have children in the prison. It's too much. In all occupations are violent. In all occupations does not give any kind of freedom. And if you don't have any freedom, then you don't have any future. And keeping you poor and keeping you underdeveloped and keeping you under very, very strict security uh, hold. And uh, it's everything. It, it might, it, one might understand that this occupation affects everything. If you are in a place in your life that you choose not to avoid things anymore, so you see that uh, things are related and uh, slowly you understand it, that you must confront your past and uh, your actions in the past and how it, um, what it did to other people. If I would have met, met um, one of those children that are not children today, and I guess I, I don't have much to tell him, mainly that I'm sorry and, um, and that I was a coward, I guess. What I can't promise him for sure is, um, is a solution or, or better future. But I can tell him that I can hope and I can do whatever I do in my side and that I know a lot of good people in here, not enough, but a lot. And maybe one day 